No. Not the, the, I, I What's got the city? bird. It was in Sydney. I was like, no, 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 no the, the city. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's Macau. Where is that? That's Makati? Yeah. I didn't even recognize Makati, man. It looked like Makati. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, there's a Pacific star. Yeah, that's right. Uh, attention, so attention, everyone. Attention, everyone. It looks oh like uh, somebody has not. He's been in lockdown too long. <laughs> He's been in lockdown too long, too long, too long, too long Okay, Growth Talk episode number 15. We've got with us my primo cousin, Alfonso Calero. We're going to be discussing photography. I know it's such a broad topic. There's so much to discuss about photography. We're going to try and, and zone in to travel photography, Alfonso. By the way, that's John Joe, Alfonso. Good evening. Good so evening. How are you? Of course, Alfonso is in, in Australia, so it's two hours away there, ahead of us, but uh, we we're able to find a common time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. So, yeah, I mean, uh, let's, let's, take let's two, start, take two, Alfonso. Take two. Take two. Take two. Cheers. Take two. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You look like the album cover of Queen right now. It's like all black except your face. <laughs> I like you that. Do I like that. You still have a lot of duty from the world. I'm a day of my days. I like that. I like that. There's so much to discuss, but Alfonso, man, I want to start off with this question, buddy. So, when did you start your journey into photography? I know you've been doing this for over 20 years. So give us a brief of what it was like to start off with that hobby. I'm sure it started off as a yeah. hobby, right? Yeah. Um, how many minutes <laughs> per question can I answer? <laughs> try try so, to keep it brief because we have a long night. <laughs> no. Yeah. So what's this? Uh, is this a 30-second answer or a two-minute answer? No, no. I have a two minute, three minute answer. That's not a problem. Okay, okay. That, oh, good. I just got to get the, the pace, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, of and course. Can, and then I can course. answer properly. So, when did you start your journey into photography? When National Geographic magazine arrived in my home for the first time. That's when, that's when I, I like, that's really the beginning for me. And then my parents had subscribed to it. You know, I think I was. I was, yeah, I, I was born, I was born to it. They were already subscribing in okay. 1965 when I was born. So, you know, basically I saw it my whole life on, on, on the coffee table at home. And then as you grow up, you know, that coffee tables where you're just sort of waiting around or, you know, you know it's that in between room, you know, that yeah, not many people yeah. use. And then you, you hang out there more and more and you're, you're the only person usually in that room. And, and, and it was always with, with National Geographic. It's just a place to go and chill and look at the you're just looking at all these pictures, sceneries, yeah. people. And then yeah. you said, wait, look at that. You know, it's, 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 it's something. So what did you think? You just said, okay, I want to see how, how, how do you take these photos? I mean, this National Geographic has been there forever and ever, right? It's been, I mean, I remember having our set back at home, right? In, in growing up with that, yeah. The, the reason I, I say that is because I want to tie it into how um, I educate people in photography, as you know, and how yeah. I'm so passionate about, about it. Basically, National Geographic gave you a window to the world at the best quality, the best quality of visual communication at that time, you know, in paper form. Right. You know, because right. you know? even television couldn't, couldn't get that quality as good, you know, maybe a movie, yeah. but not normal TV, the, just the, the, the resolution wasn't great, you know, when you're watching, but yeah, you, when you pick up that magazine, you feel it, you smell it, you know, those are the things that like really wake up your senses. And all you're doing is looking at a photograph and you're starting to imagine that the big wide world. Yeah, but then how did you jump? Did you know someone who was into photography? I mean, of course, you're looking at this magazine, but then you're saying, okay, now how do I take these photos? I, I want to start taking photos. What was your first um, camera? 
Do you remember your yeah. first right. camera? Yeah, my first camera was when I, I got the, the Canon T50, um, and I think it came with a 50 millimeter 50 50 lens. Uh, and I uh, took it to Europe in, shit, when was that? 1985. Wow. 86, actually. Okay. I, I was, because okay. uh, I'd already migrated to Australia, I was 15 when I left. And then, um, and then I, uh, I saved up money and I went to Europe. I was 19. That's right. And I had wow. been in, living in Australia since I was 15. So I'd never, right. I'd never gone anywhere else in the world aside from Sydney or Australia That's it. for that matter. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I'd never been anywhere else in the world. My parents never took me overseas my whole, my whole life until I was 15. But what my so you just really decided I'm well, going I'm going to Europe I'm going to take a camera with me and that's it. You know you know when you're growing up I bet did you get to go overseas at any time what, till you were like 14 or no? Do you no, remember I, to much home later? Home? I was much later already. Much later, yeah. 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 So yeah. That, I never had that, and so but my parents always took us on a like on a cargo ship, and they knew the captain, and there was a couple of spare bedrooms. So it was just like a nice cargo ship going through the islands in the Philippines. And that's how we moved around. And I, that's how I got to see the Philippines on as nice. many holidays as he could, he could organize that. And for me, that was the best present to this yeah. day because I left when I was 15, right? So you yes, imagine bang, yes. you're getting exposed to all of this really interesting stuff that you don't see in Manila and learning yeah. about different cultures and languages. And it was just like a wake up for me, right? Yeah, and but then, how about that camera? I mean, when you got that first camera, was, yeah. was it something that was referred to you by a friend or you just said, you know what, I read about this, it should be good? I, I think Canon was actually getting full page spreads of advertising in National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, it. <laughs> that's probably why I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Anything. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very simple. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Now let's talk about taking photos per se, right? I always, you know, I took a photo class in, a, in, in our club here. I yeah. mean, the first formal one. Yeah. And, and, and they, you know, the, the, uh, a friend of mine, Ali, who's a brilliant photographer, you know, people started coming into the class with, you know, all kinds of equipment, right? Really high-end lenses, you know, all this kind of equipment. But then the first thing he told us was, leave all of that down. He gave us all a disposable camera. He said, there's one thing you guys have to start with is the eye, the eye, learning how to compose your, you know, your, your picture. Because right. at the end of the day, it's, you know, you're going to need that. You can have all the high-tech lenses, all this, you know, whatever they are called, whatever, F1, this, the one, whatever. Those, and they really cost a lot of money. But if you don't have that eye that you kind of like work with in, your, in, in photography, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, that you, you'll just have any other photograph like everybody can take. Tell us a little bit about that eye and that composition. Okay. How do you, is that something you just have to keep practicing to learn that what you're seeing is something different from the guy beside you? Um, if, uh, if I can ask a favor, if you can pull up any of my images okay. while I'm talking and then I'll answer that question. Okay, sure. Okay, he can, that's, he's Your choice. brilliant in that. Choice. <laughs> he's so gonna he can, come up with any photograph that, you, yeah. okay. All right. So now I just wanna give you a brief explanation on, on what composition is. So composition is the language of visual communication. And okay. so there, there are many different elements and principles and I'm just gonna name 10 of them and okay. there's an anagram you can remember for all 10 of them. All right. So write this down on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to test your memory. You're going to test me, huh? You're going to yeah, test yeah. me. Go to so gallery. Gonna, there you go. And I'm going to teach you the, the 10 elements. So in, 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 yeah, gallery. That's perfect. 
Okay, so yeah. I want to teach. I want to teach your audience as well something very yeah. simple. I use it when I teach. Okay, so okay. Uh, if you actually, I'll 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 go straight off the bat. I'll give anyone watching access to my free ebook. So it's oh, not. That's awesome. You don't, yeah. I'll, but I'm I'm gonna read out. So you're not gonna post this again. People have to watch this show and listen to what the yeah. web address is right mm -hmm. don't put it in make them yeah. listen so okay. uh go to alfonso.com.au and then just go okay. forward slash okay. ebooks actually i was going to present that I, I i that's a part of my deck so Very we can good. we can show that later we can show okay, that later so little feed, bits and pieces of your ebook but yeah good. but all right but okay, this one uh, Open up anything. Start off, open. yeah, anything, any picture, so we can we can start with with that, right? Like here, okay. if you're walking through this, this is yes. Japan. Japan, yes. yeah. Okay, let me give you a quick lesson on composition. Uh, basically, I want you to remember the sentence "bold," like "kalbo." Okay. Okay. Cats. Cats. Bold. Bald, I said bald or bold? B B A L D. B A L D. Okay, Calbo. Calbo. Okay. Calbo. Like, bald. Yeah. Bald cat. 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 Yeah. Okay. Farts. Farts. Okay. <laughs> bald cats farts. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So just remember that, the, the letters in that, but ignore yeah. the A's in bald, A in cat, and ignore also the A in farts okay okay so there are 10 letters in there okay and each letter it's an anagram so each letter that represents composition for example if we look at this leading line going straight down line that's the l in bold yes right leading line and uh, you you can look at the nice uh, tonal contrast tonal contrast is t t is in cats okay um and uh, give me another photo. So I'm just sort of saying very quickly what the message is in that photo. This also has a lot of leading line, but there are a lot of shapes uh, yes. that are leading the eye into the shot, which are basically the buildings there, the, the tea houses. But uh, anyway, shapes is one of them. And the space the, that's okay. at the, the top, you got like a letter V right in there in the sky. And then yes. it matches the the like the the letter the arrow kind of thing going straight to the V upside down like that. Uh, yes, it looks like yeah. a, it looks like an hourglass. You're looking at the space. So space yes. is another one. S in uh, farts. Yes. You know, okay. and then shape. You know. <laughs> so yeah, every letter will help you understand. Right, right. But you so what you're trying all, to do? If you, at my, if you look at my work yeah. there. Yeah, composition. But what what you also have to consider style, color grading, style, the message. So when you were scrolling through my my like thumbnails, just bring it yes. back. You can yeah. see that there's a very clear color palette that I like to play with. You know, I could probably try to fix this order in a different way, but it, there there's something in the photo that I liked, right? And so some composition yeah. or element or color or shape or texture you know like the water there the that's texture so that's also in um farts yeah yeah that's texture okay okay mm. so but anyway long story long story short when i've been looking i was looking at national geographic from a very young age till to this date i was just becoming more visually literate i was just trying i was understanding what good quality visual communication is and through that magazine and looking at all the shots and going, yeah, wow, I love that. I love that. Why do I love that? And then, and that's why I keep translating it back to these collections of, of maybe, I don't know, there were like subconscious collections of things that I, I gravitated to for some reason. Can I ask you Of course, you a, a lot of the reading, go ahead. Um, so how would you define photography? Like what, what, what is it to you? It's it's capturing reality, right? Okay. It's 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 it, it's it's a way of capturing reality, and apparently that's it's it's it causes a lot of frustration, I think, because 
a lot of people see what they they want to capture right but the problem is they can't seem to get it right that's the biggest frustration they see something beautiful right whether it's the old man you know uh, pulling a net of fish into the boat and they try to snap a shot and it just doesn't get there or that full moon right everybody looks and takes photos of the bloody full moon right but it just comes out like a street lamp <laughs> it just doesn't translate so it's it's for me it's it's really the frustration of trying to get that reality that your own two eyes is seeing and putting it in a still that's how i would personally feel what photography is John yeah. Joe, do you have but a what is, is your what is, what is your vibe? It's completely different because um, most of my photography is in uh, performance and musicians, and I see it as capturing the moment. Because even uh, when I traveled to other countries and took photos, the lighting will never be the same as the time that I took that moment. The people crossing in frame or blocking certain lights will never be there at the exact same moment at the exact same time in another time. So it's more of capturing the moment than it is the image. Because you, you feel the moment, you, you recognize the moment. And when you're able to, to catch it, whether by accident or intentionally, then it's like a time capsule of that particular moment. It's not about the place or the person, but that precise moment when those particular items or things have aligned. Great, you know, uh, photography has taken so many different definitions and you can chime in here and Fonso because sometimes it's like you're an artist and, and the camera is your brush, right? And you're, and you're painting on, an, on a blank canvas. And sometimes what you're putting out as a still is not exactly the reality that you're looking at. It's not. But it's your interpretation of reality or that moment like John Joe says, in your own way, okay? So like you showed us pictures of like, for example, the texture of the, of the stream of water. I mean, obviously by the naked eye, I, I won't be able to see that texture the way you have, you know, presented it in a photograph, right? I, I, so, I disagree, I disagree. Oh, okay. So, that's, that's what I like about this. Okay, tell so, me about it. Tell me about so it. If I, if I spent more time teaching you about composition, for example, and, right. and, and whatever it is that I can do to help you understand things less literally and perhaps help you think more laterally, uh, then, then you can explore something that's really creative in you, right? And so for me, the definition of photography is, it's, it, for me, it's like a, a collection. When I look at my nice photos, it's like my personal collection of my subconscious memory. Okay, dude. I gotta take another swig. <laughs> it's, it's very simple. You, you are- Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, wait, you said subconscious memory. Why? Yes. Is it because you're capturing that moment or that image or images, okay, that you're looking at with your own eyes into this machine, okay, yeah. that, okay, so what's, I don't understand how the subconscious gets in there. So, um, we are all wired to have, uh, things that we like or dislike, we have bias, we have, you know, there's so many pros and cons in a human being, but the bottom line is, um, uh, if you want to take a photograph, it's almost like an exploration into your past as well. And the past doesn't necessarily mean you were thinking you were attracted to the yellow balloon because you used to have a yellow car when you were six years old. Not that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just talking about it's you're, you're in, when you do a, take a photo, you're like, they call it, you're in the zone. And if you're in this, in the zone, yeah. it's like nothing else that's going on matters. You know, you're just having fun. You're taking photos. You're not overthinking things and you get a shot. You look at it and you go, Oh I like, yeah, I don't know why, but I like that. You know, I was attracted to that. You're gravitating to that. And then as you start to collect things and you develop a style, you kind of 
you, you, you want to try and express yourself visually through that language. So it's like, okay, why, why do I do this? Why do I do that? Oh, I love this. I don't, I don't know why I love that, but I'm going to go and do that more. So, okay. Okay. Uh, travel, because I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to discuss also a little later about editing. Let's talk about post-production later, but, but first just on the composition bit mm. and moods and like you're saying, how you feel about it. Mm. Are there days, Alfonso, where it just doesn't work? It just doesn't work. You go out there and you're just not happy with what you took. Um, if you put your camera down for too long and you don't go out and shoot, that can happen. So it's like, it's like a writer's, writer's block or something, yeah, right? Yeah, that can yeah, happen. So but I, I never let that happen to me because I have to take a photo at least once a week. And when I take a photo for once a week, I might be shooting for an hour, two hours or something. Wow. Or, I could, or I could take a photo once a day. And um, did I just go in the dark here? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, can you see me now? No, I can see yeah. you. There we go. So, so, yeah, so, you, so what you're saying is that you need to get something taken, I mean, at least just, once a week. It's exercise. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. if you have to, or like, it's like eating for me. It's just yeah. a necessity. It's part of my daily ritual. Even if I have my phone, I'm always looking at things, ideas, and I'm just so fascinated by the whole idea of creating something, you know? Mm -hmm. just, just Moving like on. But how, let me ask you now, Alfonso, how technical can photography be i mean sometimes that's the the you know that's the barrier for a lot of people to get really turned off because they feel that there's just too many things that are involved in taking a photograph i mean i can get honestly i don't own a professional camera i don't because it's intimidating there's just so many things that can you know uh, that are on this thing that you can really mess up the, you know, the, the, the picture and whatnot. So always, you know, I just put it in automatic and just take my shot, right? So yeah. what, how technical can, and can photography be? As technical as you want to be. <laughs> okay, I mean, so you, I mean, like when you, in the camera itself is already technical as it is. And yeah. so even after, after you take the pictures, you can really go into a deep hole into trying to fix your, you know, edit the picture the way you want it. Well, I, if I'm thinking technical, I, uh, I would hope that someone can shoot in full manual mode in their camera mm -hmm. and they yeah. know about ISO shutter speed and aperture and they know about yeah. basic things like white balance and, you know, exposure compensation. I, I would imagine mm -hmm. they, if they want to get serious about photography, I mean, um, they should at least try and learn those things if they want to up the quality of the image. However, I mean, why, why buy a camera when you're not going to be using it, right? John Joe, what yeah. are you going to show us? I, I, car that? I carry this around in my camera bag. Just it's sometimes. a cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, it's when I forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes because you will forget. I well, have yeah, those, those screenshots on, on my desktop. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. Why? Because uh, well, that's why it's wet. Because I, I do uh, band photography and gig photography. And sometimes when you're drinking and you just can't remember, and you know, you end up thinking, "Oh, I forgot that everything I've learned." So yeah, that's exactly it. I have yeah, to that's a part of my deck. My you camera guys, back. I, exactly. I'll be showing that in a bit. But hey, yeah. Um, so but yeah. you know, page nine in my ebook. <laughs> I'm gonna show that. I'm gonna show that. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get to there's that. A, there's a there's a cheat for composition. And there's a cheat yeah, sheet yeah, for smartphone, yeah. and there's a cheat sheet yeah. for, for bigger camera people. So, 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 it, so, so it guys, don't, get, yeah. don't go anywhere. Stick yeah. around. Watch this. Yeah. It's not going to be boring. I'll teach you stuff. You're going you're gonna to have fun. So don't go. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Not, that was, yeah. a, that was a, a commercial. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. It can get technical, but you know, the idea is if you're going to own a professional camera, use it professionally. Don't just keep it at, you know, using the auto, 
mode, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here, here's something I grabbed off the internet. Um, talking about technicality, right? So okay. how how are just briefly try to don't give me an hour, Alfonso. Try Sorry, to I'm keep it. Asleep. Okay, try. <laughs> You have to try to make this as one on one as you can get. Okay, so talk to me about these three. Oh, I I would rather show my cheat sheet because it it has an we'll, info. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. But just you know, briefly, <laughs> what ISO aperture and shutter speed. Sorry, but that that looks visually very boring to look at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah, okay. Just How can I okay. I'm, I'm, remember? I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this triangle. now. Here's it. Um, they'll they'll remember you. They're gonna remember you talking about this. Okay. So yeah, okay. Let's start with let's start with aperture. What does that? What is that? What does it mean? Can can I can I just? Uh, okay. You want to start with aperture? All right. Basically, yeah. aperture. Yeah. Is usually on the camera if it's you on the have, camera you look on the camera you might have to go through the back menu you have a p yes. maybe an yeah. s maybe an m maybe an a b maybe a tv a b okay. tvs for pentax and canon and every other brand calls it a s right aperture okay. shutter speed those are the dials you go to why do you go to shutter speed why would you use shutter speed because you want to open or close the shutter slowly or fast what so it's about controlling movement at shutter speed okay. why do you use aperture simple most of the time it's because you want to control how much or how little you want in focus you know focus okay. eyes background blurry beautiful landscape okay. everything in focus okay okay that's so pretty much why you would go there that's why would you go there okay yeah so why would you go again there? it would depend on what subject is right so all of yeah. these things are toggled. There's no, there's no default. I guess John Joe, if you're if you're in the concert and you have to take these people running around the stage with all the lights, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to set up for that, right? If yeah. you were out in Tali looking at the sea and you're looking at a sunset, a landscape, you're totally different setup. If you were you know, if you were uh, uh, taking a football match, you know, people running around in, in a field, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, so, am I right so far? Yeah. Uh, actually, that's something I think uh, we should have tackled in the beginning, is that there are different kinds of photographers. Like, uh, when it also comes to equipment, there are some photographers who are raw. They don't use digital. They use film. And then you have, like, uh, landscape photographers. You have portrait photographers. Studio photographers are different from outside because in that area, they have control over the lighting, the space, their equipment. It's, it's different monsters. Like, uh, in just I can speak in my case, I'm, uh, I'm a bokeh photographer. I don't do landscapes. I don't do portraits. I don't do products. I don't do studios. But my particular style, well, boss, which you, you've seen or the ones that follow my Instagram, is um, performance or action-based. Sometimes the faces are blurry, but it's more about the action of performing. So it's a certain discipline. Like there is a famous photographer who uses uh, a camera with no settings at all. And it's all just black and white. So parang, okay. everyone has their own styles, I guess. Or you try to find the style that best suits you and your subjects. Right. But also, can, of course. also, you're gonna, you're gonna. It's like uh, some people used to say, "I don't do food photography <laughs> and I don't do fashion uh -huh. photography." And then, oh, whoa, I'm set up. And then they're, they're, they're and then they're, you know, they're, 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 they're yeah, they're, 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 they put on ten kilos and they're just shooting food, you know. <laughs> Or, Guilty! Or, or like, anyway, no, I don't shoot fashion. Oh, I'm gonna. You know, he has like six kids. <laughs> so Alfonso, Alfonso, what? everyone now. I mean, the cell technology has changed a lot, and everyone is a photographer with their cell phones, right? Whether it's like you said, whatever they eat, whatever looks good, boom. Uh, you know, when they're out, boom, it's, it's the cell phone is such a, I mean, it's your means for communication. 
and, and all these cell phone manufacturers have improved the lenses or the, 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 the photography, capa the, the picture capability of, of every cell phone, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. I mean, is that kind of like, how do you feel about cell phone photography? I love it. I love it. It's just another new genre. Do you have a whole course? You have a whole course on just that, right? Yeah, yeah. The most popular yeah. course out of all my short courses is smartphone photography. And most of the people joining are women. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not generalizing. You know, if I looked yeah. at the last hundred, I, I took note and I can clearly say that about 92 were women. Wow, interesting, interesting. But here's a question. You don't have aperture, you yes, don't you have do. I, I you do. You do? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you do. Well, it's there. Oh. When you swipe up, it's one. If you're if you're using an Apple, I don't know. I can't speak for Apple because it's like four years behind. But <laughs> you can, do you know do you know if we have any of that here? Oh they do. You go on manual mode. I don't um, think we have manual mode. On Apple, that's why it's always, it's always old technology when it's Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, let me cut to the chase and answer that. Okay. Android, most Android will have the control for ISO, mm -hmm. but not, not aperture, right? It's super wide open all the time. But ISO yeah. and shutter speed, you can control that manually. Oh, so see, because we right? there's nothing but, in Apple. But no, Apple, you have to, you can, you can download an app. There are many, many apps out there, um, and that, that can you have toggle to that. that. Yeah, we'll do it for yeah. you, and and more, more stuff. Pro Camera is not a bad app. I would recommend it, and it's. Uh, so, I'm not like a, Alfonso. So if I if I wanted to let's say before I dive into buying a a, a DLSR or one of these professional cameras and take it a step further. I could play around with my cell phone, mm -hmm. like a manual, like a professional camera, and, yeah. and then move from there. Because I guess, you know what the thing is about the cell phone is, um, if you have a good shot, that's it. You can do all the editing on the phone, and then you know how it is, it's, it's, it's posting. People love to share, and they post their shots, right? So, yeah. if, if, so there is a way of making your pictures better through apps. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what was that app that you said? For, what okay. was it? So for, for editing, I would recommend no, uh, Snapseed. No. And for shooting on Apple, it's Pro Camera. Yeah. I, Pro I, Camera for shooting. So if I, if I download, in, and they have it in iOS, yes? iOS? Yeah, only, only, only for, I believe it's only for iOS. But because Android don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> We've Sorry, got I'm, that. I'm from the cult of Android, so <laughs> yeah, okay. I've got a, I've, this is this is actually an S10e I'm looking at. I'm not even on my computer now. That's my phone. But, oh, this is your phone. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. It's a, okay. is, is the sound okay? Yeah, it yeah. sounds great. Yeah, the, the, I thought the, the, he, I thought it was like your your laptop that was up on something. Yeah. No, no, no it's no. your phone. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. The so, camera yeah, so and Android, is better yeah. than the webcam. You know, and the yeah. webcam on the on on the laptop, the Mac, it's, it's bad. So no, Alfonso, those pictures you you've kept in your gallery, those are all with your pro. I mean, your professional DLSR, right? D DSLR. A DSLR or whatever you call yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So, do you have one? I'd like yeah, to see. That's one. so hard to do. That's so hard. Can you can you can you try doing it? Uh, DLR S. How? Try and I can't even say. <laughs> it. <laughs> no, awesome. Listen, listen up, man. Okay, I want to see a photo that you took with a cell phone. Okay, uh, sure. Is it in your website? Yeah, you can look at the smartphone courses and see what photos are there. Okay, because I mean, is it a real big difference? Uh, first of all, you can't shoot raw on a cell phone, or can you? You can. You can, <laughs> Android can. No. <laughs> but if you download you that app, serious? you can shoot in RAW. Wow, that's see, those yeah. are the things yeah. that you know. X, if we get these apps, we can just freaking take those photos, John Joe, with a cell phone. That's, man. that's what I use. <laughs> that's literally what I use. 
Snapseed. Oh, 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 that, that's cell phone. Like the, re the recent one I did. Your okay. your phone camera, which one do you have? The uh, iPhone? Uh, I use a Google. Uh, you have a Google yeah. Pixel? Uh, three? Two. Three or? It's a two. Two. It was amazing then, still amazing now. And what have you got? Um, it's, I have that Apple, was it 11 or 10? 10, right? Is this? I don't even know. I forgot. Look, right, show me the front. How many lenses in the front? There's one in, in the back one. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. okay. that's the older model, yeah. Yeah. You've seen the 11 X, is it? I think that's three lenses. Yeah, in the back. It looks like, uh, it looks like the rocket launcher Arnold Schwarzenegger always carries. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's the one, yeah. So, so okay, wait, to just summarize. So, in other words, Alfonso, we can get into like some sort of professional photography uh, using a cell phone these days. It's, it's really gotten that advanced now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, depends and, and on like the quality saying, you want to you, get to, but mm -hmm. yeah. No, but you're saying better. if we can shoot raw, you can shoot raw, you've got uh, the only thing you say that they don't have is aperture. Is that what, or you, yeah. you can have that? No, uh, no aperture. But okay. basically, uh, um, it's just a great, great new thing. It's just like a, uh, your, your phone camera, treat it like, a, like your old snapshot camera. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know, okay, so, this, is your, you this know, is your course. Good snapshot snapshot camera. And, and one thing I think that has to be mentioned is that uh, phone companies are now sponsoring directors and photographers to exclusively what, use their product for social media. They use their professional gear for work and then for social media, they're handed models of particular phones, like shot on so and so phone, shot on so and so settings. So they get yeah. professional photographers to, to be brand ambassadors. And in fact, there are movies already shot completely on iPhone or mobile phones. Yeah, yeah. GoPros and mobile phones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's more for the campaign of, uh, I believe, even Steven Sonnenberg shot an entire film on iPhones, but it was sponsored entirely by by mac it's a full-length film okay uh Alfonso, let's talk about this editing and post-production right um so i mean there are purists out there that that frown upon you know themes or editing and stuff it's like cheating so you know it's like you know it's like you can change the sun you can change the color of the sky the C, you know, and all of this using post-production. So where's the, where's the, I don't know. You kind of get away from the whole talent of taking what was in front of you into just post-production. How do you feel about that? Oh, there are, I guess, three types of uh, viewers. Um, the purist is the first one you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the extreme level, a digital artist. And in between are n neither here or there, mm -hmm. depending on where they're, they could. And, and your, which your, one are you? Uh, which one are you? I'm neither here or there. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not, okay. A, I'm not a digital artist mm -hmm. and I'm not a purist. It's, and you're teaching. So you have to be in parts of all the entire spectrum. That's why when I mentioned earlier, there are kinds of photographers. Um, when, when I think purist, it's pure film, no settings, no nothing. It's film, they still go to a shop, they have it printed, they do not touch anything digital. Therefore, there is no post, there's no post production at all. Wait, come again? again? Yeah. This, just film, oh. film at the basic camera. Film. Yeah. Inside a basic camera yeah. before we had the digital camera. Can, so back in the day when we didn't have beards, <laughs> we had these digital cameras and little like. Uh, and you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know what they do. No? no, there's some people yeah. who do. There, there's still. There's still one of my, yeah. There's some um, people who do. Yeah. Based on my experience, a lot of street photographers do that. They prefer the the raw. That those are the ones who are avant garde. It's funny because growing up, uh, you know, Alfonso, right? We would have all these you know, cameras. It's all film, right? We were kids. And you don't know what you took that night. You know, you're out at night taking with all these different Kodak cameras, right? And then you bring it to Green Hills 
to have it develop, right? And you wouldn't know what the hell was in there because you'd forget. So it was also like, you know, a surprise because when you finally got your pictures, you're like, oh, all this blackmail, this is, you know what I mean? Before, you wouldn't know what the hell you took. Yeah. Well, Alphonse, yeah. um, isn't it different? Like, um, there are some photographers who are not good at post-production. So sometimes they get a, an editor to do it for them. Is that is that true in most cases? Uh, look, there there are some there are some people out there that might have their own uh, editor, and they don't. And if they become really really famous, they they don't even mention or acknowledge them. Uh, but if they if they can acknowledge them you know, in some part, that that would be. Uh, but people people will know. Uh, you know, you watch famous people that, that are photographers. Some of them don't even know anything about, about ISO and and. Uh, Shutter speed, you know. And okay, here's that. a question. Here's a question for Alfonso, man. <laughs> <laughs> when do new shots become? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you know why? There are a lot of people there who say, "But this is art. This is art, man. Look at the curvature of the woman." Whatever, right? But then, when, when, when is that line drawn? If you say, oh, Tekamuna, man, John, this one is already... Uh. Well, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, algorithms of uh, Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and more Instagram, they tend to make mistakes when they think they've seen Titty, mm -hmm. but yeah. uh, it's just a flower yeah. and it's been banned, you know? No. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah they, my friend, he, my friend, is a, he, he did this fine art photography exhibition he's going now and he mixed some flowers and then there were some birds in the back or mm -hmm. and uh it just kept kept every time he posted one of them there's something in the down. algorithm of, of the design of it that just always he he, he couldn't under, and he tried another one and the same thing happened mm -hmm. but yeah just a That's, flower so yeah That's so these when, guys it's a whole algorithm thing right now mm -hmm. no, it's not it's, like a call center with people reviewing yeah. every single it's, post it's right? programmed learning by the ai so you fill the ai with thousands of images and when it matches up to that then it flags down your your image uh -huh. okay no but i mean do you do nudes uh, alfonso no <laughs> no no <laughs> Is there, no, I, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just yeah, asking because, you know, a lot of photographers do, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you yeah. never know. Well, so so it's maybe a I hard call it, what am I going to call it? When I next, because I, most of my tours, um, you know, I, I'll, I call it like the landscape photography workshop. What am I going to call it? Bomba tours. <laughs> bomba, bomba photo tours. Bomba <laughs> tours. My God! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bomb, bomb, bomb landscape photography workshop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, In terms of technology, where do you see? I mean, you you've gone through how many cameras since your very first one, Alfonso? How many? How many cameras have you gone through? And because of the upgrades, technology, right? So how many cameras have you gone through? So, 20, you know. 20, 20, I don't about know, 20. my life. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, now, can I ask you this, right? So where is there, is there room for improvement in the technology of the camera? Because is it the lens, is it the body, is, mm -hmm. or, or a little of both? What do people, uh, I mean, right now, it's just all these, all these, Sony's out there, Canon, mm -hmm. you know, all these guys are, are trying to outdo one another, getting their own ambassadors, you know, to, to endorse them. Okay, so like, for example, today, what do you use? What is your uh, go-to? I, uh, I have two kits for traveling. Okay. So depending if it's uh, local or interstate or overseas. And, oh, okay, uh, depends. So the, okay. The, yeah, so the weight, it's always about the total weight of the bag. So uh, for my overseas one with a laptop, I just take two lenses and a camera body, and uh, it's five kilos in total with the laptop and all the gear. With the laptop, in my, nice. In my hand carry. That's my limit, five. And then if I have uh, the heavier one, of course, I can only take up to seven. Okay, 
Okay. So, so, so and then tequila. you have different brand. You have different brand of, of cameras, or it's all yeah, the same. Different, you... different brand. Okay. Uh, so I shoot uh, Fuji Fujifilm uh, XT3 mm -hmm. and X Pro, um, and I have uh, basically lens, just two yeah. prime lenses I use. So I use. Uh, so someone else has the same one. What happened? Yeah. Nice. That's his new. That's his new baby, man. That's I do his new have baby. <laughs> I do have a, a follow-up question because we are talking about the advances in in cameras and a common argument. If we do have photographers watching this this stream, I think they'd like to know: Are your are you for mirrorless or not? Because I was going to ask that. Mirrorless exactly is the new that. one. I was going to ask that. Mirrorless. Or not. That's like Sorry, asking someone Marvel or DC. It starts a fight <laughs> or a debate. Yeah. So, so what, uh, what, is, what is the difference? I mean, mirrorless or not? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest of them all? <laughs> um, it, it's like that. You know, it, there are pros and cons for both. Um, so mirrorless basically means that, uh, you know, before you take the lens out, there's a, it's got a little plastic cover before it hits the aperture area with a normal one. But now that mirror is gone, the sensor, which is uh, just behind, doesn't have a cover. So the, it can get dirty a lot. That's what I don't like oh. about mirrorless. While the other one, oh, at least you had something in between with, the, with the, not a mirrorless, but like a proper DSLR. But so, do you think that, that there's some... Seen, but that's a lose in, Sorry, Alfonso, do you lose information by adding a mirror? No, why? You're just, that's why I, no, that's no. why. I mean, it's a marketing thing. Maybe they're just saying, okay, you know, we don't, we don't have any mirrors here, so you're getting everything 100%. Eken's got a question. I just wanted to ask wanted what to ask camera what you used for, you for your, your uh, landscape photography landscape. in Japan. Like the pictures we went yeah. through. Yeah, so uh, some of those are with, with the Fuji film, and some of them are with the Canon. So I used to have a Canon 5D Mark III, but then I upgraded uh, last year to the EOS R. You know, the R5 and R6 just came out. Expensive, but the R is what I got now. I'm loving it. It's mirrorless. And I still going have the 5D Mark III, which is normal. So going back to technology, where can this go, uh, Alfonso? If you just try to peer into the future, camera manufacturers do to a camera to improve what it is they're doing the day for the, the photographer the camera okay if i was going to make one suggestion for for any designer out there thinking of something new i'm sure they've had it told to them a hundred times but the biggest aim technologically is that when you take a photo and what your eye sees is not what the photo can take mm -hmm especially when you have very dark and bright areas in a photo. But our eye, when it adjusts, it might take, if it's come from bright light and goes into darkness, or, you know, eventually it'll adjust. And then we can see a nicer range of, of bright to light, right? Our eyes have a right. dynamic range, AKA high HDR, right? High dynamic yeah. range, like you see on your cameras and when you do the editing. Basically, if the new cameras can match what our eye sees, that would that's be it. incredible. That's, that's, that's wow. reached the, the peak, unless our eyes get better than what we see. Wow. So I, have a, so I have a question in regards to what he can ask. Um, this is something that comes up a lot, is because uh, Egan specifically brought up Japan. And uh, I've been to Japan and I took photos. And noticeably, my photos in Japan were much better than other countries in some, to some degree, in some respect to that. Now, some photographers have argued the fact that it depends on uh, your hemisphere, where you are, because of the, how basically the sun goes up and down in that particular country. Do wait, you have a wait. I'll, one second. Alfonso's going to get a drink. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm gonna... Go, go, go. This is a time out. <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to repeat the question of uh, basically a place yeah. where he wants to shoot. Oh, and yeah, I do have Bomba. Photography. It literally says Bomba. These are street <laughs> these are street photographers. They sell these in Germany and but they're Pinoy. Germany really? and Japan. Yep. Uh one of them because I shot one of our music videos. I'll be right back.
it's it's there's you know Eken's really happy with what he bought the c- camera he got which which you recommended as well which is good why Eken why aren't you in the like the like properly set up to join the conversation I'm kind of just like the uh, producer. Like, somebody here. has to be tech, <laughs> yeah, somebody has to be tech support and make sure show. everything is running. Yeah, no, but if you can, if you can at least fix your sound and the lighting, you'll be good to go. Yeah. Think about I mean, it, because you, you, you should be in this conversation. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. I mean, why not, man? Next time we're going to be three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, okay, let's go back to John Joe's question. Go ahead, John okay. Joe. Okay, so based on the, the comment of Ikan earlier about uh, being the photos, particularly in Japan, some photographers and friends have argued that it depends on where you're at or what country, that lighting in some countries are very, very different from others. And noticeably, even if you're not a professional photographer, if you take photos in Japan, they just look crazy good for some reason and some people can never replicate that beauty when they're back here in the philippines they're like ah my photos are shit again i wonder what happened then they tinker with their phones and think it's the settings but it is the lighting of the country right the hemisphere um yeah it helps but if you look at my photos you there's the same kind of lighting and color anywhere in the world so yeah. it's just so you about know what you. to do with it yeah yeah so it's about playing with your own palette you know and then knowing what you're trying to express and understanding how it mix and composition works and yeah so you can do that anywhere that's the skill that you have to try and build mm-hmm. so when you're yeah. editing as well you don't just press one button like a preset you gotta mm-hmm. you work the work the frame like a paintbrush I mean, you yeah gotta, it not you do what's called local adjustment, not global adjustment. That's and, it. Yeah, local adjustment. Yeah, because that's why some people were saying it's the same sun, and then they'll argue, oh, it's just cloudy oh, there, or the weather has something to do with it because sun yeah. has more precipitation when it's more humid. <laughs> it's yeah. They 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 came yeah. up with all these arguments that depends on where you are in the world, the lighting definitely changes, so you will have to adjust eventually. We're gonna show a couple of photos here and really get down to the travel photography, Alfonso. So I wanna get your take, a little story, a brief story behind each picture that we're gonna show, okay? So obviously this is a typical, this is your your class. This is a, one of your travel tours, right? Yeah. Okay, where, where so, was this? Where was this? This was in um, Asturias. Oh, nice. Um, and I was there September last year. Shit. Wow. It feels like a... <laughs> it feels like... What happened to the year? <laughs> I know. It's like, holy cow. It's just like, it seems like such a long time ago. Yeah, anyway, wow. so we're, we, that was on the uh, last, last uh, yeah, September last year. So that's David and Marilyn. I just had coffee with them this morning, actually, here in Sydney. Uh, but they came with me, uh, and there was another customer, Sue. Um, and then the guy who took the photo is my second cousin, who's actually, I think he's related to you also, you know, the Lowenson family in Madrid. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. yes. Nice guy. Yeah. Jaime is nice. famous. He's a, he's a photographer as well. And so... I, I, we, he came on the journey. He was, a, he was our driver, and, and um, he was so good at ordering food. He's like, he's a <laughs> food again. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Look at this. So this, good. this picture. I mean, wow. I, I picked a couple of shots, right? And this one was like blew my mind. This is like this is in the Philippines, a, tip, a sunset in the Philippines. Now, okay, talk to us about this one. Yeah, Sikihor. Okay, and, and um, so when you're taking photos of very bright uh, sun, um, in this situation, the sun had already gone down. You know, it was it's actually not yet, but it's almost down, I think. Right. But, so you still see a little bit of the red ball. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, mean, so uh, what you want to do is you don't you don't want to when you take the photo. What happens is it looks too bright in the bright parts. Correct. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to expose for the bright part only. 
And luckily there's enough glow from that to spread to other parts of the image that I was able to pull out in editing. But when you look at it at the back of the camera, I didn't add anything in or put anything in that wasn't there when I edited it. I just sucked out the, from the raw file mm -hmm. the best tones that I could, you know, play so you, with. you dropped the exposure. Yeah, I think I believe I was maybe minus one or something. Okay. This one, this is beautiful, Alfonso. Where was this? Oh, okay. That's interesting you found that. This was taken in February of um, 2018. I had a photo tour in Hokkaido in Japan. It's, you know, nice. up north. And so, you know, you know, I, I used to live in Japan. You know, I'm married to Ritsuko from Japan. Yeah. I speak Japanese. Awesome. I used to live there a long time. So Japan is like my second home. I, I, I absolutely adore it. And this is the first time I got to go up to that part of Hokkaido in winter. And those are all the crane birds. So this is actually a composite shot. So this is where you might argue with the purist in me, which I definitely wasn't. This, I stood in one place with a tripod and, and every time they would fly over, I would just shoot click, 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 click. Mm. And so basically uh, uh, I took 10 frames, I think, and I just- Pick one. You know, I just, no, I put them all together like that. So I big big mm, different parts of it. Okay, you assembled it, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind I don't, of, I don't understand. I don't understand. You mean to tell me the birds around the sun was in one photo, the birds flying on the right where it was in another photo. You you assembled this shot? It's like tracing mm -hmm. paper. You can put it's it's the, the landscape hasn't changed. I haven't moved the camera. The only thing that's changing are those those the, the birds, birds. The, or the crane birds coming towards awesome. you. Awesome! Yeah, I, I think I, I really think, cool. I think yeah. I can explain it to boss easier. Um, what? Have you seen Have you seen those photos of a couch and it's the same dude like giving himself a drink, pouring himself a drink? What yeah, is, yeah. It's him. That's it. So it's the the camera stays at the steady position. Your your uh, subject moves. One shot here. One shot here. <laughs> one shot jumping. Okay. And then parang you patong patong it, you layer it, and then you get every all those photos interacting with each other. Well, it's beautiful. like layering. It's beautiful. Basically, this one, you're, okay, you're, you're, this looking, one. you're looking at one photo, but uh, another way to explain it really simply is you look at ten photos, but they're all in one photo. So one. you're looking at probably I tried to take time, a photo. two seconds. It's like you're looking at two seconds in one shot. Mm. Can, you were saying um, that's not my photo by the way i took a photo of this this is my photo i just like tried to do something like that <laughs> nice. showing myself here <laughs> nice. very good nice. love it nice double exposure there thank hey, you that so photo much. you're about to show with the aboriginal man that's not my shot so that's, that's one of shot. my staff Oh, but I wanted to ask you, Alfonso, though, about a shot like this. Um, you know, I like taking pictures of what you, you have a term for it, astro something. What's this? Photography. Mm -hmm. when you're taking the sky. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, but it's interesting how, you know, I don't know. It's just how do you get all of that in? Is it like you're on a tripod and it's open for a long time? Is that how it works? I don't know if you're framing these questions to uh, uh, give me a lot of um, publicity, but um, <laughs> in the ebook, again, if I can uh, show you, I, I believe it's in chapter three or four, uh, there is a whole section there showing oh, you that. about astrophotography, what you need, how to do it, where mm. to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show that in a while. Don't worry. Yeah. I have that in, yeah. that in my deck. Then this so one, this, this is black and white. This is black and white, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Then this one, I mean, you've got everything in focus here, all the way to the back. That's beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's just the contrast of the color of the leaves, which looks like Mary Jane. <laughs> The five leaf, right? And and you literally got, looks like, like a Uncle wallpaper. Huge. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it looks like a wallpaper, man. Right? 
Beautiful. So wait, so where was this, uh, Alfonso? Uh, in, a, in a studio. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, Lake Kawaguchiko. Or, uh, there's five lakes in the area around Mount Fuji. And so that one's called Kawaguchiko. And so there's literally um, a bunch of trees like this. And then you just get close up. And there's a hundred other people that are around you trying to put their camera where you're putting your camera. And yeah, it's ridiculous. Everyone wants to. But it's a beautiful use, so. shot. Beautiful. Yeah, you gotta you gotta time it so you get that nice backlight hitting it, and then uh, and then yeah, uh, you can uh, reflect it with a, a big reflector if you have one in the shot. Look at this one. That's Look in Hokkaido again. That's that's a, that, that's a Nat Geo shot right there, man. Look at that, that X. Majority of these shots are not geo shots, if not all yeah, of them. I mean, look how beautiful that is. You see every feather. I mean, the light against you know the bird. Wow. Is is this beautiful. like um? So this is technically like a bokeh, right? Because it's uh, focused in front and blurred in the back. Yeah, you could call it that. But you know, the word bokeh comes from the Japanese, and basically, mm -hmm. it it means out of focus, right? Mm -hmm. So, but it also. Uh, it's a sort of politically incorrect word as well. Yeah. I can say that. It's it's all, that's why, that's why we have say, John yeah. Joe. That's why we have John Joe. Have, no, 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 no. Yeah, especially in the Philippines. John Joe, where the hell are you getting all this it's, shit it's, it's, from? You can Google it. It's literally the definition. You yeah. can Google it. Boke. B-O-K-E-H. It's there. Yeah, but... I'm not an expert here saying it's wrong, man. But oh, no, 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 no. no. He, he did no, say no, it's wrong. Okay, but oh. Oh. No, I didn't say it's wrong. It's just that there, there's oh, okay. people who have dementia. They, they also call them yeah. okay. So like, and it's also a verb to be like absent-minded. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I thought you came up with a word bokeh, which was like jeje. Je on, dude. It sounds yeah. really bad. Yeah, right? that's yeah, that's why. Um, actually, I learned because of Japanese photographers, friends who learned from Japan also, and that's it is a Japanese term. But in Filipino, it sounds like just change the DP and you have a completely different like, word. Sounds yeah, it sounds like bokya, right? Sounds bokya, like another right? Filipino yeah. word too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It does. It really does. But surprisingly, okay, it's a, it's a common it. term locally. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that oh shot, God. man. Okay, we're this Sydney, right? Is this Sydney? No. no. The, the, I What's this city? It wasn't Sydney. I was like, no, 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 the, the city. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's Macau. Where is that? That's Makati? Yeah. I didn't even like, recognize Makati, man. It looked like Makati. I was like, <laughs> is this Sydney? <laughs> There's the Pacific Star. Yeah, that's right. Uh, attention, so attention, everyone. Attention, everyone. It looks oh like uh, Samari has not. He's been in lockdown too long. <laughs> I've been in that's lockdown too long, like. man. Dude, that's right. That's Makati. Look at that. No, maybe because it looks so clean. I was about to say, you don't see the pollution. And the... Dude, it looks so damn clean, man. It doesn't look like Makati. <laughs> Yeah, man. So where were you when you took this shot? Um, at the hotel that I stayed at. Um, what was the name of the hotel? Yeah, you can go to the rooftop there. It is a bar. Ah, I forgot oh, the wait, name. That's specific. Ah, wait a minute. This I is in. You were in Makati Avenue, right? You were down yeah. Makati Avenue in yeah. one of those. In the corner of days. Paseo de Rojas. Yeah. Uh, the bar, looks down. Like, the bar looks like something from The Great Gatsby. <laughs> okay, yeah. I haven't been there. Look at this. This is the one you were talking about texture, right? Look at the water, right? Look at that. Beautiful. That's really nice. Where was this, Alfonso? Uh, Boulder Beach. Batanes. Beautiful. And what time was this? This is like almost setting. This is a setting sun, yeah. No, sunrise. It's a sunrise. They yeah, can't even tell, man. So it's is like there sunset. is there a big difference between how the sun looks during sunrise and sunset, or is it both classified as like golden hour? Um, 
Yeah, because every sunset and every sunrise is always different in color, shape, texture, and uh, yeah, whether you see the sun or not too is another thing when it's rising or going down. But no, I mean, like, like you, you thought this was a sun sunset. Yeah, I thought it was a sunset, man. Yeah, it, yeah no, it's a good question because a lot of people, photographers, who don't, we can't tell the difference. Yeah. But we, if we know the location, like I, you know, if I see a photo mm. that's been photographed around the east coast of Australia, if in seascape, it's, chances are it's a sunrise. Yeah, you yeah. know, so or the west coast for sunset, you know. So that, that's it. I mean, we don't know, but I, I, this is in. Um, yeah, in, in uh, La, Mes La Mesquita. Oh, that's cool. So there's, this one has a, yeah. a, sh a shutter yeah. delay, right? Yeah. So this place is difficult to shoot because you're not allowed to use a tripod. Mm. No flash, of course. Uh, but tripod more than anything. So the security guards are there and they'll always, you can't, you can't use it. Oh. If they see you walking in with it as well, they'll actually leave it at the door, you know. However, you can walk around and take photos. So... You just find flat surfaces and use that as a tripod. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, boss, this one I don't is, know if you know. This one's crossing. really beautiful, man. This one was like, yeah, I saw the ones that people, they look like ghosts. Yeah. But this one, wow. Look at how much light you got in there. Look at that. It's like full on. I, you it's know, even a shooting star. The problem with this delay when you're talking is I was looking at the girl going, Oh, that, that's yeah. after this, after this. Oh, yeah, and then I thought you were talking about her all this time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Same here. Like, there's a delay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is a delay. Yeah. No, so what's this? This was, where was this? this, uh, this. That's uh, in Tasmania, um, uh, in a lake called Dove Lake, and that's Cradle Mountain in the distance. Beautiful, man. I that love this fun. shot. Uh, that was photographed uh, October uh, last year wow. and um, you need the conditions are so important you know because it's so hard to line up the Milky Way I didn't put the Milky Way there that I would never do that like that's my my limit about mm -hmm. editing I would I wouldn't move the Milky Way to that spot because that's cheating I was but, actually uh, noticing yeah. the reflection also of the water how still it is this picture is yeah. insane to get that reflection it's crazy dude I'd love to have that in my ceiling. <laughs> okay, this one, this one's interesting. Where was this? <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my, that's uh, Luna Luneta Park. So okay. this ended so, up this ended up being a whole series of photos that you probably noticed they look similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there's a whole story behind it too. Um, if yeah, yeah, only if you're interested, I'll tell you the link between all of them. But you, um, basically, the title is "Environmental Refugees," and in one hour of photographing and meeting all these people, it's just like you talk to one person, you know, San Provincia mo, you know, that's the first mm -hmm. question you ask, and then all of them always answered, and then most people always answer out of Manila, and then you ask, you know, how long have you been here? Why are you here? What are you doing? You know, and all of them came from out and they were just forced to kind of go and work in Manila and they don't have the skill set to do the jobs they used to do back home. And wow. so they go on the streets and they, they, they have to make do with what they have. So they were so open to talking. And then as I talked to one person and then I met another one randomly, it was the same story. And it just kept on happening for one hour as I walked along Manila Bay. And then I looked at the wow. photos after one hour, I was with my customers. And I asked permission from every single one of them, and I talked to every single one of them. So, um, yeah, it's important cool. to talk to people if you're taking photos, I, I think. Unless you're trying to do a different style of street photography, which is more about, yeah. um, you know, a graphic nature of the place and time. And mm. So, yeah, this all me, of you, all, yeah, that's, that's good, uh, because it's, like, really candid, and it's, it's, it's expressive, very expressive. But here's the, here's the book that you were talking about. So, the Travel Photographer's Essential Guidebook by Alfonso Calero. So, we'll put the link at the description below, so you guys can see that. Look at that. Okay, so this is the chapter one, Technical and Creative. So, you've got 
how to shoot in manual mode, how to master composition. Very, very good. And then chapter two, it goes to the different places, how to shoot cities at night, how to shoot seascapes. So you're, you're basically throwing it out there. It's about what, 90, how many pages is your book? 96. 96 pages. For it's free, four, guys. Four years of writing for Australian Photography Magazine. So I just picked wow. the best articles on my website. You can see a blog. You can join the newsletter if you want to continue to get these kind of stories uh, emailed to you for free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is just like a compilation of all my newsletters, all, that. all of the writing I was doing for the magazine for the last four years. And I just picked the best ones and I mixed it with my, uh, my teaching and my, you know, what we, we do, you know, so yeah. that's, that's a then you, of shot. course you come to editing here Adobe uh, Lightroom and Photoshop so everything from taking photos of different kinds of subjects to to editing that's brilliant so it, it, it we'll have the link down below so you guys can can get a hold of this okay let's move on to some trivia Alfonso where yeah, does yeah. the word cocktail where does the <laughs> word cocktail come from okay you've got Four choices here, okay? So you read them. First oh, one, from the, French, from the French word, coquetier. You know the egg cup that looks like a jigger that the bartenders use? Okay, apparently the first, one of the, one of the, uh, the reasons they came up with the cocktail was from there. It was mispronounced and it became cocktail from coquetier. Okay, that's the first option. Second option, it's from gingering a horse. Because you know what gingering a horse does? When you put a ginger up the ass of the horse, you cock up the tail of the horse so it becomes perky. So that's the second origin of the word cocktail, okay? The third origin is, well, what John Joe says, is a cocktail. No, it's no, no. For, I said, oh. Uh, it's oh no, cocktail. For no, no, it's mine. This is mine. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> Letter C was mine. It's like a cocktail was used to garnish a drink. Ergo, cocktail. Or the fourth option, which is John Joe, a cocktail, a man's tail in a bar. So okay, so Alfonso, what do you think is the most probable? definition or etymology of the word cocktail <laughs> um, so please uh don't take any um bad uh feeling from what i'm about to tell you so i don't i don't mean any disrespect here okay? no not at all man okay well, this um, is a poll this is an ongoing poll there are no okay. wrong answers I, there's okay, no wrong well, my, answer my answer is uh who gives a fuck <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to the cocktail. I don't want. No, no, but not, okay, but just pick one. If you had to pick one that you'd feel would be the the, the true. I gotta, I gotta stick to my message, man. It's like... <laughs> zero points are gonna be given. <laughs> zero points. Zero points. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. We're we're gonna go to the next segment, Alfonso. This or that. Okay. Okay, basically, you're going to choose either this or that. And you have to tell us the reason why. So this is brought to you by our newly launched Crow's Nest Agricultura Rum. Yum. It's which, available which now. I'm drinking right now. Which John Joe is having right now. And hopefully soon, uh, uh, Alfonso, you should try this rum. Good and stuff. I, and, and I took made, that photo. Made, <laughs> yeah, a good photo. John Joe, good photo. Made directly from sugarcane juice okay are you ready yeah this or that hmm. mm. wow man <laughs> that's mind that's mind cool. blown mind blown <laughs> yeah yeah it's your it's like you're asking me um do you wanna do you wanna focus on focusing or do you want to focus on movement uh, you know okay 
they are so focusing uh, is, on is your mouth. answer is it the answer depending on the subject that's right oh, so there okay so, so, so you can't you can't you can't really give one answer that's that's true because it depends on the subject if it was a if you were taking a, a football player for example it would be this right if you yeah. were if you were taking a night shot it would be that correct some mm -hmm. somehow well it's dark so you need to also control the shutter speed so it would be it would be fully manual um, so you can control both this and that Sorry, I'm uh, selfish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had this talk earlier. Film or digital? This or that? So I guess, um, is it true that you've been, I mean, from the time you started your first camera, it was film, right? Yeah. It was yeah. film. And then, and then you got to digital. It's, it's, it's been a, you know, there are purists out there who will not let go of film. And I, I just wanted to know, I mean, first of all, what would you pick? You'd probably pick that because that's what you do now, correct? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Now, but let me ask though, what, what do the purists love about sticking to film? What is it about film or being a purist photographer that just is, is something to hold on to? What is it? There's actually a big renaissance of, of uh, film photographers and the biggest demographic are the young people. So, um, so um, you know, it's really, they, they just, they just want to give it a go and try it. And they, like you said, you, the beginning, it's like an excitement. Then we go and pick it up and you forgot about it and you're developing 24 or 36 shots and you, you you said you took all these photos a few months ago and then you went to the shop and yeah oh, then you start to remember you know, yeah or you or you're actually you have this also this um feeling of excitement like you're going to get a gift you know and you go there uh or yeah. there's also a bit of anxiety because it's like oh i wonder how they turned out but that yeah. time the time between when you shot it and and actually got to pick it up and look at it that time really changes your perspective as opposed okay. to going click and look, click and look, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a totally different feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of people enjoy film. I mean, I encourage people to try and shoot like that with digital. So don't look at the view, the, uh -huh. the live view yeah. when it pops yeah. up. Just, yeah. just yeah. shoot, 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 shoot. It doesn't cost okay. you anything. You don't have to, and then just don't look at it. Even if you, I, most people I do this exercise with, I say, 10 minutes, don't look at it. Yeah, don't look. 10 minutes, oh my God, 10 minutes, I can't get it. It's like, <laughs> like, take it easy, man. Yeah, Here. It's, it's not costing you any any money, any film. You know, yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. before every shot was like, well, it counted, right? You have yeah. to just make the deal with it. But <laughs> yeah, it's like, that, I don't know, John Joe, it's like music, right? There's a whole renaissance of all these vinyl records coming out. but. Why, why do you want to go back to the record player when you've uh, got digital music? I don't well, because, get that. Because of its uh, collectible factor, first of all, and then there's also another, sorry, first of all, it's the sound quality, it's the gear. Um, when you're a collector, like when we had the, the comic book talk, you can get a really rare comic, but if it's not in good condition, then why start it? You might as well just sell it. You want something in pristine condition or... When it comes to cameras, thank you. I love the assistant. See, I even have a manual camera as well. Yeah, yeah. So every, everyone has um, particular reasons for getting it. But when yeah. it comes to uh, Inya, when it comes to music, when it's vinyl, it's really more of a collector thing. Uh, hipster kids have been getting albums, but they're repressings. They're not even original press. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of an image thing. Like they always yeah. say, the hipster has the beard, the manual camera, he plays vinyl. And, <laughs> and his name and is this, John Joe. Yeah. His name yeah. is John Joe, man. Triple J. Oh, so yeah, I, I, I'm a victim of my, my generation. Alfonso, this or that, are you a beer guy or a spirits guy? Mm. Uh, I think I'm into gin more. Oh, nice! Yeah, nice. there's um, there's lots of talk about the gin that I like, and guess who's doing the talking? 
<laughs> Who is? <laughs> The crow stalk. The crow stalk. All right, man. Next time when you're here, we should yeah definitely have a couple couple of them. And I love those pictures that you took. Those cocktail shots. I love beautiful shots. Those are beautiful shots. Oh, these are the ones in Instagram. Yes. Remember okay. the, the ones yeah, I showed you? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. The crystal glasses. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here's a here. This or that. If you had to upgrade, is it the lens? I hear both kinds. Is it the the camera? If you had to. Uh, all right. Um, the camera. Really? Camera. Oh, because you have the lenses yeah. already. Yeah, I've got a lot of lenses. Because so that, that's the most body. expensive ones, right? The lenses are the ones that are killer expensive, right? You pay for glass, and if the glass or the optics are great, you, you keep them forever. Wow. And if you pay for plastic, it'll, it just ends up breaking quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in this, in this one is the time of day. Um, I basically saw so many shots of nighttime or daytime. What is your favorite, this or that? That you feel oh, what time of the day? Yeah. What time of the day are we talking? Sunrise, sunset, middle well, of the day compared to the middle. Yeah, let's go. Day let's go night. middle of the day and middle of the night. So it's really like yeah. either sunny okay, or sunny. dark. Yeah. So middle of the night. This 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 photo is obviously um, you know sun is setting on the right and then it's very dark to the left because you're lo probably looking west. You know. Okay. Whatever you see, let's say this. If this was the shot. If you had to choose between the left or the right, this or that, what would you choose? Hmm. They, they're both amazing together. Why the hell would you cut it in half? It looks great. But yeah, you could probably, really, yeah, no. They look great together, don't they? But do you have like a preference on when to shoot? On time, yeah, when to shoot? Oh, uh, probably, um, depends on the genre of photography you're going for. So if you're doing like street photography and you want harsh light, harsh shadows, you know, you might go in between buildings in the middle of the day when the light's coming straight down, you can do nice black and whites and, you know, like getting a little person walking through a big scale of architecture. Uh, that's yeah. could, all that could be done in the middle of the day. You know, even in the overcast days, you could do street portraits, people close up in the shade. It works really well. But if you're doing landscape, you know, you might, want to get the nice light and you have beautiful you have to really look at the location and uh, so would you say that shooting in japan i'm just going to go back to that because i really liked your photos there but would you say that shooting in japan at night was really good and really cool because of like the red neon lights and the many like street signs that they have yeah so at night nightscapes in most cities in the world usually look east, nicer to shoot as a uh, you know, architecture, a cityscape. Yeah, that's just a, that's just a, and you always try to aim to do that and maybe get like this shot, whether it's sunrise or sunset in, in the shot that way. I mean, if it's a, if it's a sunset, you then you'll end up be shooting for the rest of the night, right? Yeah. And it's dark. Yeah. So it's good to get that combination of both. And then uh, Got it. Thanks. just see what happens, move around the city. And what do you like about the Japan shots, the, the city shots? Yeah, I really like the city the city shots you have. I love like just the angles you took the which, shots in, and like how they reminded me of like Wes of? Anderson films. I'm thinking of let me yeah. bring them up. I'm thinking about yeah. shots that you had think, like the I don't know. red oh, Samari. lights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Samari. I don't know. I don't know. I so I thought that this sort of talk tonight could be uh, you were going to ask about the story behind the photos. But uh, we haven't really explored that. Is there any chance of uh, looking at that? We, sh we should do a take two because it's we have a we have a limit on our time, right? But this is just yeah. a broad strokes. But I would really like to have you again and talk okay. more about the actual photos, right? Because you have a lot of good ones, mm -hmm. and and he can actually wants to bring up one that that because uh, he likes uh, this uh, this specific. A film okay. maker 
that um, all right here, let's do a here, teaser sorry. let's do a teaser now I'll ask to ask yeah. to to promote it if you want like this so shot you, I really like yeah. this shot if I were to make a movie I would get you to be my cinematographer just for shots like this <laughs> okay yeah so, um, that, that is so cool that's um you've been to Kyoto haven't you we were there, but it was raining. We had to turn back. I remember. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we were so there, this is, but it was bad. Yeah. But anyway, this is in Kyoto. So, okay. We, never, yeah. we didn't see this. So like most of my, my tours, it's really about knowing exactly where to go and when to go and knowing what the light is going to be like in that time and place. And then I let my customers loose and, you know, I'm just giving them like the, the menu and I go here, man, look at the, choose what you want and I'll see you over there. And, you know, or I'm right behind you or whatever. So yeah. this place uh, is at, um, so the sun is already set. So you got the blue hour mm -hmm. after the sun is set and then they turn the lights on. So there's a nice contrast between the two. Um, a lot of people walk through this laneway. It's called, it's in Ontocho in, um, along the river. And it's like, okay. I think they also call it Lantern Alley or something, but yeah. Such a nice you, just look for really color. you look for color and, and place team. So, I, you have to pre-visualize a lot of things, and timing is important. This one too is super important. Yeah, this one. Uh, one? This was in uh, Yanaka Ginza in Tokyo, which is like the old downtown area of uh, that's Ueno. Also, you know, I used to live around there for four years, um, and it's like uh, the old downtown. Uh, yeah, incredible that that building is like close to where not you know not too far away from where those cars were in the last shot. It's such an extreme. So yeah, so yeah, so then you know, we have to you know we have to definitely have a second, have a second uh, episode, episode where we, we dive, dive in, into each of the photos really and understand. really understand. Your, your, you know, you know how, how you compose and, and, and how you really appreciate that shot. And, you know, I mean, let's go through the whole thing. Right now, right now it was more of the broad strokes and, and really a teaser to, to dive down, especially for, for travel, travel photography. So what we'll do, we can, we'll put all the, all the links below so that we can let everyone who are interested out there to learn more about travel photography or even smartphone photography i mean you offer a number of courses courses even online right Alfonso? yeah so so um uh, if you are interested um there's if you you um let's say we we look at people with the opportunity to do a live stream with me like to teach them in a group of eight, like so I could teach them about their phone. All of those options are on my website. So um, that that could be the um, sort of like the end goal. And then if it sells, we can even give me if you want to get a commission. And it sells to get through, <laughs> no, no worries, man. Yeah. No, I mean that's no, not at all. I think no. I think what what Crow's talk is about is really you know a lot of people out there don't know too much about certain topics like this photography and whatnot right and so, and so what's the, it's like what's we, the goal of this small, what's the goal of cross talk right i i what's it's your really, mission it's statement? really you know having something to drink and talking about a topic man there's really nothing here we just we know we're stuck in our homes and i think we have to explain honestly i have my own personal questions about the topic so uh -huh. we 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 talk about you know we had we've had mixologist we've had a, a a cartoon geek we've had a spirits geek we've had I mean name it you know name it I mean but yeah. we've always had I've always had questions about what makes them tick I mean like you know the cartoon geek the toy geek I mean you know things like that and I think uh, Ganjo, yeah, you were saying. what it really boils down to is uh, I don't know if you're aware of once but we have liquor bans now uh, even crows can't sell basically there were there were I think two months that had passed and some cities are still at um, liquor ban so the idea of the podcast also is the out of sight out of mind we don't want people to think that we have given up we're still, you know, entertaining. We're still talking about their brand. We're still getting out there. 
um, uh, we're the only brewery in the country who's actually doing something right now. Another thing that we're offering. And yeah, it's entertainment because majority of our work is in bazaars where Ikan helps me out too and expos yeah. and events like that where we actually get to talk to people and they get to meet us. Since our team is very small, it's a very small and personalized Green. type of business. Yeah. yeah. So it's us basically yeah. talking to them again, not in a bar or on the net, but online. Yeah, and you know, prior to you, we had someone who just talked to us about fishing, everything about fishing, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was fun, right? Listening, you know, all the types of, you know, kinds of fishing, where to fish, you know, here in, 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 in and around, you know, Luzon or Visayas and whatnot. So it's, it's pretty good, man. I mean, there are a lot of questions out there. I personally have John, Joe, Ken. It's, it's like being a renaissance man. You know what I mean? You want to hear, you know more about what, what life has to offer, right? And so we have lined up a number of guests from all, I mean, diverse I mean, full-on diverse topics, right? So we, it doesn't have to be alcoholic. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, we just love to learn. Yeah, and it so happens to be sponsored by Crow's Craft. Exactly, right? <laughs> so having said that, Alfonso, we kind of have to have you back again. Definitely. And let's definitely have you back again and let's discuss more on a detail because there's so much I want to share mm -hmm. photographs and, and the stories behind that right I mean less less of the technical let's put that out and let's dive into more of the photos and, and what you've done around the world I mean you've basically been to what I mean of course Australia the Philippines Spain uh, mm -hmm. What are the other places you've traveled and done this photography, Alfonso? What else? Uh, Faroe Islands. Okay. You, um, you know the, where they are? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone pull up a map. Oh, and show shit. this dude. He doesn't know. I mean, where is that? Okay, just tell us. What, I mean, where does it belong? Europe is it in freaking South America? Yeah. It's above, above Scotland. Above Scotland. Okay, yeah, okay. There we go. Faroe Islands. Faroe we got Islands. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can remember that link I sent you earlier of the photographer. It's from Faroe Island. It's actually our stuff with you. But yeah, we're running out of that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll have that for the second yeah. episode. Okay. But yeah, so oh, yeah. we, we always, always end the episode with a challenge. Since we're going to have Alfonso back, I challenge you, boss. The next, before, okay. before Alfonso guests again, take photos with your camera so Alfonso can judge your photos. If you learned okay, anything from that. this episode. I'm going to take some too. I, I, you know, I, I got a copy of his, of his uh, e-book. E so I'm going to start you know, playing around with the apps and whatnot. You know, sometimes I take some shots you know, out in Tali and he goes, says, why don't you try doing this or doing that? Even Sol, Sol's photos always gets bounced to Alfonso. Alfonso, what do you think? You know? Yeah, right? we can do that. We can have a, a mini cross contest. Game, a competition. Let's do it. Can you and I, and then Alfonso will do No, but I'll only do that if we use a cell phone. Okay? It's okay. got to be a cell phone. Okay. Deal, deal, None deal. This high tech fair, camera. Fair. Contest rules. Right. Fair. What, the what, about, what about this to add to your idea? Everyone that's watched this, you yes. can also take photos and make sure you submit it by when. You can tell them by when they need mm -hmm. to get it in by. So that you can and if they submit it, the it I'll put it up. And show it to you too. Yeah, we'll put it up. Yeah, we'll put it up. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Let's do yeah, it. Let's do it. Yeah. Do you want to include the audience with the content? Yeah, yeah. The audience, they'll oh, win a, bot a bottle of something. But between us yeah. three, we have our own contest. <laughs> we have our own contest. And you're yeah. the judge, Alfonso. Yeah. You're the judge. So, Singular you know, judge. You're the, you're the man. You're the man. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So <laughs> Okay, Alfonso, thank you for being with us in Crow's Talk. It was I mean, it's not enough time. An hour is just not enough. We can we have to have more time for, for you and discuss this thing over over some drinks, right? But uh, we'll have you back definitely. And I like the idea of the contest. So cheers to you, Alphonse, and 
and more power to your <laughs> and more power to your photography. Thanks for coming buddy. up. It was super cool to talk to you yeah, again. Thank you so much. Gracias, primo. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>